So we're back on this 2003 Ford F450 with the 6.0. Um, it needs a couple injectors. I think it needs one per side. The customer just opted to do all the glow, all the we're doing all the glow plugs and we're doing all the injectors. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the injectors and see how that goes today. But I try to have it all done in one shot. It's not really that much work. So we're gonna disconnect the reservoir. Pull this um, root force racing and take off hot air intake. Hot air is like dirt, dirt injection intake. We had to replace the air filter on it because of the contamination. Uh, it was coming apart, stuck in the filter media was coming through, it was falling out. Stuck in the inflation engine. Pretty funny, but I mean, not really, but I shouldn't find it funny. But it But don't ever run these. And then we got a nice Chinese acid flow looks great. Probably gonna have issues with that when I'm done. <laughs> so this is actually studded. I'm just going to do one side at a time for now. Okay. And then pop this off. This is the 8 millimeter on the inside. Now we got to do the FICM and this looks like an easy. 13. Uh, we have uh, an Allen. <laughs> So let me grab a 13, somebody do Okay, so got 13, got an Allen. Oh, let's get this. If I see him. I don't know why it has a washer on there. And this is an early style, as you can tell, it's laying sideways. FICM bracket off. Like it says, early one, you gotta be careful because these washers love to fall out. So, you wanna kinda keep an eye on everything. These early ones are just kind of a, they're actually a little easier. I like them because under the valve cover, they're not too difficult to work on. You don't have to deal with dummy plugs or stand tubes on these. And the way you can tell that, if it has a dummy plug or a stand tube, is if the ICP's in the back. That, and those are the wrong studs because there's no threads on them. If the, uh, the ICP's in the back, it's just gonna have rails with uh, like a snap to connect fitting. So like I said, you wanna be careful with this. You can see that's already falling apart. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Just wanna, kinda wanna be careful. You don't wanna drop any of those little washers. Like I said, I have a towel over there. Okay, um, let me grab my blower. I'm gonna blow it off and then we'll start ripping it off. Okay, so I already blew it off. I saved all the blowing up for off camera so I didn't blow anybody's eardrums out. So next we're gonna pull these bolts. They should all be 12s. You wanna kinda keep a mental note of where they go. Sometimes that one comes off. It was on a shorty. I'd pull the divot. 
How's it going? Good. It's a shorty. Usually with the longs in the corner. So I might have got them mixed up. Check it when we go put it back together. It looks like that's just the way this side is. The other side's like that too. So we can get this off. I gotta go talk to that customer. Usually I do these by hand. Kind of cheat a little bit today. I'm gonna do it by hand. So let's get the antenna off on the dipstick tube for the engine oil right here. I'll pop this harness off. Ooh. That's nice and tight. The problem with these is trying to diagnose anything when you have, especially like an ICP concern, because if the ICP fluctuates any bit and you can't see it, you can't really, it's really hard to determine if you have an injector issue or not. You know, and it, it just, it sucks, but I always want to make sure these things are running as good as possible before I make a recommendation on them, especially for injectors. The last thing you want to do is misdiagnose, say, a set of injectors. And only have a bad ICP or something crazy. Okie dokie, we're back. With a brand new. So let's see. Let's go ahead and get this one off the back. Like I said these ones usually have to be by hand. Especially with the oil rail, especially on the passenger side. It's not as tight over there. And if I don't get the injectors in time, I might just take the other side apart. If I get this side apart, I start taking the other side apart. I was hoping to have them by now. Okay. I might need to grab something else. Okay. Now, um, this front bolt, there's one right here. It's gonna be hard for you to see. Might be able to kind of see it right there. Fold everything back. Get that one out. There's that one. Valve cord nice and loose. See the stud? Not studded. That's pretty cool. Definitely helps. I don't think it's, you know, it's not going to make the truck perfect, but it's something better than nothing on these. This harness and this gas and this valve cover. I'm putting my brain together. Make sure you don't set that on the alternator. That spark for name. And you see the difference between the. It's actually really clean under here. It takes very good care of it. So we'll pull the gasket out. And the trick is when you put the gasket back in, make sure you put it in the right way because it can go. It could essentially go either way. You can flip it, and but it won't fit. It'll kind of fit, but it won't fit perfect. So make sure you pay attention to that. Um, yeah, I forgot that the rail was eight. I'm gonna need to grab my snap to connect fitting release. And then I have an eight, so we're good with that. Let me go grab that stuff. Okay, kind of get a better view. Got the coolant reservoir in the way. So this is the tool I use to release them. You just 
take it, stick it between the rubber and the rail. Just go pop and it won't come out until you pull the rail out. So just, just like that. Next we're gonna go ahead and pull the rail. So we're gonna use your eights. I'm gonna use my impact socket. So strip them. I don't remember, there's seven or six on the left here. You don't want to drop anything down this engine either. So make sure you take your time. socket that I made t40 um, it's actually a blue point it's supposed to be like two inches longer I cut it down and made it fit perfect on these so we're gonna go ahead and pop it out and 
this and that one. There's number two, let's do number four. It's a little dark back there, so it's kind of hard for me to see. I gotta do it all by feel. And then, and then let's do number eight. I really don't remember which ones we were having a problem with. I have like three of each. I'm working on right now. A six O and two or two six O's and a seven three that I have to do injectors with. So. Um, I know that we recommended a couple on this and the customer wanted to change them all. So um, that was my personal preference anyways, but you know, sometimes it's, it's a tough pill to swallow because it is a lot of money for these injectors. So I try to, you know, I understand. Hopefully, hopefully they're all good. These motorcrafts that we get sometimes I get, when I do a set, I notice I usually get one that's not good. Usually every other set. But I have a set to do on this, and then I have half of that. We're going to do half on that other truck over there. So there's, here's the injectors right here. That's what they look like. I'm getting them all covered in rag juice because it doesn't matter. Um, so let me set those aside. Then next what we're going to do, we're going to set rags over the entire side of the engine because I don't want to have to get, I don't want to dirt this engine. We'll do our best to keep it sealed off as much as possible. And I still do have to do the, the bolt plugs. I'm going to take a pause on this one now. I have another step I need to tend to. Come back and revisit this in a few minutes. So I have yet to get the other injectors, so we're gonna just go ahead and start tearing the set apart. So I can get this thing done. I already uh, did the glow plugs on this side. The customer wanted to replace the harnesses, so I'm waiting for those two. This harness over here on the passenger side looked like it was leaking anyway, so um, be careful with these alternators. I try to put a rag when you take this charge tube off, but sometimes you tap it and it can spark. Oh, I should loosen that up more. So let's get this to loosen. Pay attention to where again the studs go. Bolts. Pretty much on these, generally studs go all the way around besides on the bottom of the airbox and in the back corner. Generally. Tight. Get a 
was that one. Yay! That's not a good sign. It's usually bad. Okay. And this one. It's missing the rubber. Yeah, missing the rubber underneath. See yeah, that one? This one is on the top, but there's still some rubber right here in between. So I'll have to do that extra bolts. Get the back one. I'm gonna go down. Actually, I think I can do it from the top. This is the way I usually do it. Just take a 12 uh, gear wrench. That one's actually tight. Somebody did that. Somebody had to push on it or something. Break it. Me and Tell's been thinking for a while. You see all the sweat on the valve though. so tall. Look at the valve cover. See that's cracked. It's all oblong. I pushed out and pushed in. Again, extremely clean. I don't know if I'm going to look at the valve cover, bro. Let's just get these injections out. Then we'll take You just push in, give it a little wiggle. There's the gasket. Um. Now 
now I'm not gonna be able to get all the bolts with this ratchet, so I'm gonna get as many as I can. Get I need a semi deep eight and the rest of them. Let me grab that real quick. Okay. Hopefully you can kind of see in there. Let's see if I can bring you a little closer. There's a little bit better of a show, so we have this one to get. It's gonna be easy enough to strip them. They can be very tight. There's one. There's two. There's only two. Oh, I missed this one right here. It's okay, we'll do it by hand. It's not gonna hurt nobody. And this is the side I looked it up. We were having problems with. Uh, I think it was cylinder three or cylinder five. Probably. All of them. People always racing up and down the street. It's crazy. Once I get these injectors out, I'm gonna go check our our stash and see if we can have a uh, early valve cover. Cause you can't put a late on it because there'll be no ice evil. I could probably use a swivel, a swivel in there and a ratchet. I just don't want to strip them. Set, pop the rail, or try to pop the rail out. I'm gonna set it to the side, let it see how it's draining down. Now we're gonna get all the connectors off so I can undo the get the injector harnesses loose inside the valve cover. I blew the side off, but it looks still pretty crusty. Okay. Let's get my injector harness remover tool. I think this thing was like 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon. It might have even been cheaper than that. But it works so good. So much easier than using a socket. 
I would, if you do a lot of these, I would just buy one. It's worth the money. See, top. Tip, Dave. Yeah. Killian. Uh, you saw right? Uh, I would, he wanted to do the whole side. He rode on the front, yeah. He rode on the front, front all four, so. Yeah, I just have to do all four, and then you gotta pull the tank and inspect the semi unit. Okie dokie, now we're gonna get the injectors loose. Loosey, loosey. Take my magical ratchet. <laughs> We're gonna have to get back here. It's gonna be a little tight. Here's that one. Let's see if I can pull. Okay. I got that one too. Now let's get these two front ones out. That one might be a little bit more difficult. What's that? Let's see if I can get this one. If I can get that. There we go. Pop right out. Like a weasel. And the brackets can sometimes stay in there. It's not gonna hurt nobody. And then also a trick. I always wanna make sure the coppers come out. You can see the copper colored spacer right there. I wanna make sure those come out with it. You don't ever wanna double those up inside the engine. That one fell to the ground, I'll grab that one. You never want those doubled up. It can cause damage. That one looks good. All right, keep on dropping them. Trying to grab the things. Check. I'll grab those out before I clean them up. But we're done for now.